going to talk about what for our natural language generation today. What's the power of natural language generation? I'm going to highlight Wordsmith and its features, and how we generate, a, how we construct a, spot, a Wordsmith template, and how we then connect that up to Spotfire and produce the uh, natural language from Spotfire itself. So, what is natural language generation, and what does it do for us? So, it falls under the machine learning area of natural language processing. It generates human-like speech from computer representation uh, or a set of rules. Uh, we can take use natural language generation and take structured data and make stories with the tone and variability of a human being, but completely written by software. We cut the reliance on people to incorrectly, perhaps, interpret data, and we quicken the pace of reporting. We can generate hundreds of thousands of distinct, unique narratives every day. We can also standardize the diction and style of our reports and choose the business questions or insights to highlight in that narrative. So Wordsmith is a product that uh, provides an open API for language, natural language generation, and it's powered by automation in, Automated Insights, which is a, it's a company. So it's a partner company uh, with Tibco Spotfire. It has many unique features, which include an easy-to-use rule-based template for natural language generation, and rules are configured in the form of complex nested branches for each control flow of the narrative and they are formed using building blocks. Within um, Wordsmith, it can handle grammar rules internally, so an versus a, and it also provides formatting options for narrative based on the type of the actual variable. So if it's numerical, you can uh, change the way that number is described, for example. Um, it has a web-based API for minimal lat latency as well. And we can use that API to um, generate the the, uh, the 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 narrative within Spotfire. So, what does a Wordsmith template look like? Well, let me just actually go straight into Wordsmith right now. Um, this shows me editing a, uh, a Wordsmith template, and I can actually just type in some text. And you'll notice that it's just come out as black. That means it's got no kind of um, interactivity or variability or any variables um, or, or synonyms or branches within the, uh, within the data. It's just as simple as actually just starting to type in what I want to uh, uh, say in my natural language. But um, I want to highlight here a pre-built template uh, that we've worked on. So if I click on a paragraph, you can see that paragraph kind of um, collapse out or, or expand out into all the different rules and, um, and, and synonyms and data and the way it's constructed here. So now I've clicked on that top branch, I can see that there's a number of rules. So for example, uh, if I'm looking at all states in the US, the 50 states, then I'm going to actually generate some narrative that works over the whole country. If I've only got one state, then I'm going to work over, um, produce uh, just some narrative that's based on that state that I'm looking at, uh, and if it's got if it's got a profit, profit value change greater than zero, um, and if the profit change value is less than zero, then I'm going to this rule here. So you can see how it's quite easy to quickly build up a rule structure um, which is based on the actual data, and it will generate whole different chunks of narrative. Um, Based on that data, uh, you'll, you'll notice that we that branches come in blue. So I've just actually expanded a branch, so you can see how that works. But then we can also have um, synonyms. So uh, what this is going to do is uh, randomly select one of the following uh, paragraphs. So that nicely gives us some uh, some natural variability in the data. So because we've got one, two, three, four options here, it, the, the generated narrative is always going to be uh, uh, mixed up with one of these sentences in here, um, and that's going to be randomly generated, so it doesn't always look the same, even if the, the data is basically the same. Uh, okay, so now um, I'd like to show you how data comes into the, um, the, the template. So if I click on this here, that's a, a case where we've got some, some data variables. And 
we have this state top profit change value. So that's one set of, uh, that's one variable that's present in our data, and that will get substituted into the, uh, the, the template when the natural language is generated. And this is how we change the formatting of that. So um, uh, there's, there's, that, that basically shows you how the, uh, the, the, the template is generated. And it's possible to be as simple as you like or as complicated as you like. This is a fairly complex example, but it's designed to show you all the different um, features that, uh, that, wordsmith, with, that wordsmith has. So again, here you can see each of these um, paragraphs has a branch with their rules. And I can click into one of these and explore how this is written. Um, and you can see that branches again. And it's got data, which in this case is going to be a categorical, um, so some text. And this one here is a, uh, is, is a variable, a, a numerical variable. So once we have created this template in, um, in Wordsmith, I can switch over to um, to, to Spotfire and show that uh, we have some data in Spotfire about profit change um, based on all the, uh, the states in the USA. So at the moment, uh, I've not selected any states. So if you remember when I generated uh, the, the template in Wordsmith, uh, it's going to follow that first branch and generate a, a narrative that applies to the whole of, of the country. So if I click on this button, what it's going to do is assemble the data and send it to the Wordsmith API and generate that narrative. So uh, in, in this case, um, you can see it's, it's selected the bits of the template that I wanted it to based on the rules. And it's talking about um, the, the whole country, so New York. Um, Actually, it generated the whole, it's generated for a selection space. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. So now I'm looking at the whole of the United States. So now it's going to show me which, um, which, which state uh, is, is, is generated the largest for a quarter of growth. And um, you'll also notice that if I click this button several times, it will actually generate a different narrative. So even though the data hasn't changed, the narrative is completely different. And Wordsmith is class leading in terms of its ability to uh, generate that naturally variable uh, language so that it doesn't look the same and is interesting to read every time. So again, if I now select a couple of states, um, it's going to compare those states to each other and um, generate a, a narrative that Tell that highlights um, which which state is number one, and uh, talk about that as in 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 terms of the whole region as well. And again, as I click this again, it's going to generate a completely different narrative. So um, hopefully, it's not boring for uh, um, somebody to read because it's got all the nice uh, variability based in that text. Okay, so if I now go back to my slide deck, uh, I'd like to talk a bit about how that works and how and how that actually goes on behind the scenes. So again, we've got a couple of more examples here. So based on marking the data, we then have an Iron Python script which uses the Spotfire API to um, take the data from Spotfire and uh, bundle it up as some JSON data, which kind of looks like this. So this is a sample JSON uh, data file, which then gets sent to the Wordsmith um, API over here. And we get the res results and responses from that. And, and we, it returns the narrative to, to Spotify, which we can then uh, display. So if you notice, there was a, a, a variable that I referred to um, in um, in, in, the, in the Wordsmith template. Uh, so one of those might be state top profit change. And so that means that in this case, um, Nevada is the state with the, top, with the highest profit change over the previous quarter. So that's how the variable that's here 
gets translated into the WordSmith template. And again, that's an example of how the, the, the Spotfire API can very easily and powerfully be used to interact with an external system, pull that system, and return the data from it. I'd just like to call out a couple of links here. We will publish these at the end of the, the, the session. Um, we have a community page if you want to know more and to get the reference that I've shown you here. Um, and there's also the link to uh, Automated Insights and their partner page with Sivka as well. And a couple of press releases as well, which we will also publicize after the meeting. <laughs>